Well, that was fairly impressive. Hey, everybody. Bill1911 here. Hey, uh, we're out. Uh, we're off the beaten path a little bit today. We're out here in some of the, the fields out South Florida. Um, if you look around, the weather is not great. We've got a tropical depression off the coast, and it makes the weather squally and nasty and all that. So we're trying to do a video today. What we want to do is just take a few shots with three of the most powerful handguns around. I mean, these things are, they're all cannons. One of them, a lot of people have shot it. The 44 Magnum isn't, isn't the big dog anymore. At one time, it was the big dog. Um, now we do have another one that's pretty darn powerful. It's called a 454 Kazool. That thing's a bit of a cannon. Um, it's the same diameter as a 45 Long Colt, but it's like a Super Magnum 45 Long Colt. And the third one is the, the Monster Hand Cannon, and that's the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Now, we're not going to shoot them much today because we're dodging a lot of rainstorms and a lot of pretty nasty weather. Um, we're uh, we're kind of riding through, basically these are just the roads in the farm fields. We don't want to get out in the field themselves because these have been disced and they're very, very soft and you will sink and get stuck. So one of the common misconceptions about driving around with a four-wheel drive out in the mud is that you go real fast through the mud holes and that's actually a mistake because what happens is once you get going real fast you get out way out into that mud and you get stuck out there and now the tow, tow truck has a real hard time hooking up to you to pull you back out so you kind of want to go in slow and if you get stuck you actually get stuck pretty close to the edge which makes it a lot easier to recover your vehicle okay let's get going We're going to make some little splashes and then we're going to get a little more speed and show you how going fast can make a real mess out of your vehicle. And okay, now one of the things about these ruts that are in the road you can't really tell how deep they are so going slamming through them real fast you can end up hurting yourself on them or getting stuck or having a problem so again speed is not necessarily your friend one thing it covers your windshield in mud and you can't see crap so uh, going slow is not a bad thing when you're out here off-road now you want to see a prime place to get stuck look right out there now that is some very soft very nasty mud and it's very very slippery it's like driving around in axle grease so you pull out in that stuff, and that may be where the tow truck has to come to get you. All right, so this is where we're here today. We're going to do some shooting. And as you can see, we got some real lakes around here that are a real pain in the neck. So we're going to try to stay more to the edge of it and not go out in the middle of it, because we don't know how deep it is or where that sticky, slippery mud gets started so we're gonna stay over there all right so we're here and we're gonna make some, make a few banks if you don't like the weather wait five minutes because it'll change now right now we're standing in a nice hole in the weather it's nice and blue overhead so we might actually have time to shoot this video we're gonna give it a try all right, so we've set up some targets. Not that I'm actually going to be able to hit anything, but, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, now, this is what we used to do a long time ago. This is, this is plinking. You just go out and plink at cans and stuff like that. Uh, we used to do it with a 22 because it's a lot cheaper. The other side of it is, with this, these cannons we're shooting today, if I hit one, it may take all of them right off the top of this thing. <laughs> we may not be able to shoot anymore before we set up more targets. Okay, we're going to start out with our 44 mag. Now, this is the pistol that I hunt with, so that's why it's in that cross draw holster. Um, anyway, that's my, my hunting piece. Okay, now, as you can see, 44 mag. Now, I want to show you something real quick. It's, it's humid out here today, and it's hot. Now, I talk about this all the time, but this gun right now is actually wet. It's from coming out of the air conditioning in the car, 
and if you can see the condensation is forming on the gun now remember this doesn't just happen on the outside of the gun it happens on the inside of the gun too I tell people that here in South Florida if you put on a lot more oil you're gonna have parts not wear out like you do in other places yes you do have the problem with dust contamination so you have to maintain it a lot more regularly but this water is a real problem let me show you two little spots here okay if you can see those two little red spots right there that's rust on a stainless steel gun okay so that's what we contend with down here in South Florida places like South Carolina and the barrier islands they contend with the same problem when you've got really high temperatures and really high humidity you come out of the air conditioning out into this and everything sweats okay including our bodies down here so that's that's kind of an issue so I talk about the oiling all the time and this is why so I'm actually physically showing you that this gun is actually getting wet you can see it on my fingertips if you get close enough and you see the water on these two fingers and that's just from rushing across that barrel so that's that okay this is the 454 Casul okay and this is on what's known as a super red hawk frame okay this is a big dude you compare it to that 44 and that's a whole lot more gun okay and here's the cannon itself the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum is that thing a monster or what now I showed you how big that 454 Casul was that monster absolutely dwarfs that 454 Casul. That thing's a cannon. Okay, pretty pretty respectable size cartridge. This is the 454 Casul. As you can see, it's a good bit bigger. And this is the one that I think Thor actually might be afraid of. This one. Look at the size of that dude. This is the 500 Smith and Wesson Magnum. And you can see when you put it up next to that 44, just how much bigger it really is. I mean, they're they're all pretty healthy monsters. But this thing, boy, this is a cannon. We'll see how this comes out when we do the video. Is I'm going to put a GoPro camera on my head, which I'm hoping that the glare from my head doesn't cause a problem with the actual filming. <laughs> uh, you know, anything's possible with this head. I used to tell my friend, man, I got a headache. And he'd look at me and say, you know what? A head like that ought to ache. <laughs> he used to do that to me all the time. So this is our head strap. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to put the camera up here on my forehead so that you guys can see what I see when I'm shooting the gun. All right, so that's what we're going to try to do. I know I look a little bit funny with this rig on my head. But those of you that make YouTubes, you know this is pretty normal. All right, so. What I'm going to try to do is set this up so that you guys can actually see what I'm seeing when I'm shooting the gun. So that's where we're headed with this. Okay, here we go. All right, the can in front of the light bucket. What else? All right, the can in front of the light bucket. Boy, that one went off a lot harder. Okay, we wanted to kind of see these cans fly. So I'm hitting the cans, but the bullets are passing through and it's not knocking them off. So we're going to have a little fun with this. Those are my shots. Were they? <laughs> All right. I'm going to fill this with water. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to go with my shoes to go get it for you? Yeah, if you don't mind. Here, we give you this. This is a paper can, too. It's okay. It'll, it'll do it. Sure. There is my cameraman's best side. I'm missing the target. 
Didn't miss it that time. <clears throat> Got a lot of boot to it. Now for the real beast. <laughs> Mercifully, this thing only holds five rounds. <laughs> which is actually a good thing because I don't really want to have to shoot it six times <laughs> like I said this thing's a beast I flinched that one I didn't All right, now this, this particular caliber actually comes in several different bullet weights, okay? This one is actually one of the lighter ones. Uh, I believe this is, yeah, this is 350 grains. These things go up 400, 450 grains. They get real heavy. Those heavier ones, man, that's a handful to shoot. Okay, we wanted to kind of see these cans fly. So I'm hitting the cans, but the bullets are passing through and it's not knocking them off. So we're gonna have a little fun with this. All right, so what we did is we filled one of these cans with water. And so what that'll do is that the, the water, the density of the water when the bullet hits it, it should send that can flying. It should be somewhat on the spectacular side. At least that's what we're planning. Okay, 500 Smith & Wesson. It's got velocity. It's got mass. It's the kind of gun that'll kick your, oh yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We should have filled all of these up with water because that was a lot more fun. You hear that one? All right, now I talked about this before, but we're shooting very light bullets in this. These are 350 grain bullets. And with these 350s, this thing actually doesn't hurt as bad to shoot it on your wrist and your hand as that 454 Casul. You shoot that Kasul and that thing's a handful. It's got a lot of buck to it. Now since the GoPro is still running, you can see that my cameraman apparently needs help loading a gun. <laughs> All right, now I'm just letting you know that we don't exclude our cameraman. We let him get in on the fun as well. I gotta tell you, he is hitting the targets. One other thing I wanted to show you with this gun, let me take my ears off here so I can hear myself talk, because I'm probably yelling at the camera. <laughs> All right, this thing has a second muzzle brake on it, okay? It goes into the same place. This one is for the heavier weight bullets, okay? So it's, it's a different muzzle brake, but it does a good job. So, okay, now I realize that this kind of looks more like a Sasquatch than a man. <laughs> this is my cameraman out here, and, and he is kind of Sasquatchy, I gotta say. But this is what he's wearing to keep the mosquitoes off of him. This is called a bug tamer, and I'm gonna show you a little something on it here. I'm going to turn this kind of inside out. You see this mesh in here? This mesh holds this outer part off your skin a little bit so that when the mosquitoes land on it, they can't really get their stinger through the cloth and into you because it's holding it away a little bit. Okay, this is called a bug tamer. Okay, now this is just kind of an FYI thing. This holster, I actually made that holster. This is my leather work. 
and it actually works very well it's a good holster I also lined the holster with sheepskin pretty cool huh now what we don't want to do is hit that big rock over there but as you can see we can pull right up here with no problem at all what we don't want to do is drive in that canal that would not make us a happy camper would not make it a good day it would actually make it a pretty crappy day my cameraman really doubts my driving ability apparently um, this thing climbed that little hill without any trouble now he wants to know if it'll go down <laughs> you know things go down generally a lot easier than they go up but that's not necessarily true if you're on something really steep it's kind of easy for your vehicle to swap ends so you want to be careful when you're going down hills take your time don't be in a hurry having a little fun <laughs> pointed out something it is actually kind of funny um, I'm driving down the road and there's like this this plastic bag and I don't know what's in it so I slow down and I drive around right but yet I was out there in the in the in the fields driving over coral rocks and boulders up hills down hills through these huge puddles and stuff and so he says he says why are you doing that when you go and do all that crazy stuff out there in the woods and he makes a fair point so I told him so what Superman, he'll stand there and let the bullets hit him, but when then the crook gets runs out of bullet and throws his guns at him, why does Superman dodge the gun? Huh? Because it hurts. Huh? Oh, let me go around these potholes. I'm sorry. Oh, there's another one. Let me avoid these things, man. I'm Bill 1911. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Bill 1911 here. Hey, listen, if you're watching this video, if you're enjoying it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, okay? That's really important to us. And make sure you like us, and by all means, come to visit us at AskBill1911.com.